Good evening, everybody. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you've had a good week. And most importantly, I hope you've got a nice dram in front of you. I, I certainly do. I know my guests are more than likely to have some wonderful whiskey on front of them as well. So as always, let us know what you're drinking. Um, for those of you that are new, thank you for coming along. This is our softer side sessions where I get the opportunity to speak to fellow whiskey fans from around the world about their um their role in the whiskey industry. And for those of you that are coming back week after week, thank you very much. It, it really means a lot to us. Um, it, it, there's no point in having these conversations if there's nobody to listen to them. So thank you for coming back as always. And it's great to see you all popping up in the chat already. So uh, I hope to, the conversations keep flowing over the night as well. As always, if you've got any questions for me or for uh, my guests, please fire them in and if I, if I can catch them as they're flying by, I will, I will pose those questions. Um, so tonight's topic is Italy. Um, that's a very broad topic, I, I guess. Uh, one of my favorite conversations to have with other brand ambassadors is where they like to go on holiday. Um, as people that travel the world for a living, I often think that the places that we go on holiday have to be really incredible, you know, to make us go back in our free time. And for me, it has always been Italy. I have a massive love for Italy. I'm a fan of food. I'm a fan of drink. I'm a fan of history. So few places are more compelling to me than, than Italy. But you might be asking, what's that got to do with Scotch whiskey? Um, very simply, as one of my colleagues said earlier in the week, as Scott Fraser mentioned earlier in the week, um, if you are a fan of Scotch whiskey, you should be a fan of Italy. You should be interested in Italy. Italy's role in the history of Scotch whiskey cannot be um, cannot be understated. You know, it's. In the 1970s, when everybody else was drinking blend and when the Scotch whiskey industry was talking about blend, um, Italy was the biggest single malt market in the world. So my guests tonight are uh, one of the co-founders and one of the contributors to Whiskey Fatule in Italy, uh, Italy's first um, dedicated whiskey blog. And we're going to have a conversation about the, the market, about, about the country, about the, the love uh, for whiskey that Italians have. So please join me in welcoming in Jacobo Grosser and Marco Zucchetti. Jacopo, Hello. Marco, welcome. I'm sure that I butchered your names in the introduction there, but I apologize for that. <laughs> no it, it was perfect. Actually, perfect. I have to say, I really appreciated the way you, you, you said the facile because it's uh, it's the right spelling. Usually people say whiskey facile, but it's, okay. uh, which is more obvious, I, I guess, but, but still it's uh, whiskey facile, so great. Fantastic. Have you Italian roots? Do we have I Italian, Italian rules? Because you are, you spelled perfectly. Ah, no, I've just I've been on many, many holidays to Italy. Like I <laughs> said, if, if I'm given a choice of anywhere to go in the world, you'll, you'll find me eating a bowl of pasta and drinking a nice Italian red wine. So um, so thank you guys for coming on. I think, um, as always, like we try and do with these things, it's, it would be quite good for each of you to give a wee introduction to yourself and, and tell us a little bit about how you fell in love with whiskey and and what you do in whiskey okay i'll i'll start marco yes. is it, of course, right of course. Uh, so um as uh, as you said uh, i i found it in uh, with with the giacomo who is a, a close friend of mine uh the the first uh whiskey uh, tasting notes blog uh, in in Italian actually and it's it, it's been uh, the, the first and the only one for for, for, for some time but <laughs> but uh, we, we now it's I guess almost 10 years that uh, that we have this uh, this blog and uh, we we reviewed um, sort of uh, thousand and three hundred uh, um uh, whiskies uh, so we we've been working and drinking a lot just 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 for you guys of course <laughs> and uh, and uh, you know you, you asked uh, how 
how I fell in love with whiskey. Actually, it was uh, it was weird because um, my I, I've always I'm, I'm, I've never been an, an heavy drinker, uh, but I used to drink uh, uh, when I was uh, at the university. Uh, I used to drink. Uh, um, you know, cheap blends. I won't. I won't say names. In in uh, in the caps, in the screw caps. In in you know, just around in parkings. So yeah. I, I, maybe I, I can say that I used to drink whiskey for you know to, for my street credibility or something like that. <laughs> but but it, it wasn't. It, it, it was just uh, just booze. <laughs> I, I have to admit. But uh, when I was uh, starting my PhD. Uh, in, um, in Renaissance literature, I, I, I went to a symposium in Edinburgh and I already started, you know, trying some, some single malts and I was curious about it. And I went to the Royal Mile Whiskey shop and uh, I said, okay, uh, just give me two bottles of single malt. Uh, I, gave him, I gave him a budget, of course, but uh, I, you choose, they just need to be very different. One, one from another, and they need to be uh, not the not things that I can find in, in the supermarkets, of course. And the guy I remember uh, sold me uh, one Mortlock 16 uh, chlorofauna and one Longo CV, uh, which is the, the Longo Peter uh, at the time. And I, I remember that I, when I came home and I opened the two bottles with Giacomo, we were just stunned. Because uh, we 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 they, they they didn't even seem like the, the the same spirit. I don't know. So that it was so much complexity and so so many nuances when you when you used to smell and then sip. And it was already weird for us to start smelling what we were drinking because we were used to as I said. And not to, drinking so. in screw cups too. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but but in true. in Glencairns it was really really strange for us. But in the end we <laughs> we managed to do it. And uh, no, so. So that's that's how everything uh, yeah. began. Basically, we we were, uh, and that's what still uh, makes me love whiskey. Uh, we, we were, as I said, stunned by the, the complexity and the the, the uh, broadness. Is it an actual word of the the, the spectrum of uh, whiskey aromas? They, I mean, they they didn't even seem like the same spirit. And this, I remember, was really really breathtaking for me and then we started uh, you know uh, uh, attending to whiskey festivals we were actually the, the very first with the with samples in italy so i remember that in, in, in the very beginning uh, people in uh, the stands used to look at us like who are these weird guys who they, they, they're surely trying to to scrounge something so maybe I don't know. and actually uh, scott i, I will mention uh, uh, maurizio because i know that, that, that of course you know him the, yes. the very the very first time i, I spoke with maurizio uh, was at my very first uh, milan whiskey festival and uh, i was trying to fill my samples and I, of course i wanted to pay for them but the guy that was working with maurizio the stand told me what the hell are you trying to do? No, no, you, you cannot, you cannot do it. So then Maurizio came and said, okay, who are you? What do you want to do? And then, then we met. And in the end, I ended up <laughs> working with him. But still, uh, we, we were kind of weird. <laughs> the weird young guys that used to, to walk around in whiskey festivals. Yeah, and then, we, uh, as I said, it, it really grew up. It really grew on us because uh, we ended up uh, opening a, a whiskey blog and, and in, in the end making our passion our job. Yeah, yeah. So. I, th I think yeah. your uh, your introduction to whiskey there will will resonate with a lot of people that are tuning in in the, finding that diversity within Scotch mm -hmm. whiskey. I've always said. Um, that I think that Scotch whiskey is the greatest spirit in the world because of that breadth and depth. You know, there are other spirits that have they have complexity, they have richness, but they play in a in in a sphere. You know, um, most gin will have a juniper flavour to it. Um, vodka will have its flavour, and there's complexity within that. But that broad sweeping scale from very light, fruity, citrusy single malts right through to big meaty things like the Mortlach that you tried. Um, I just don't see that in many other spirits categories. And, um, and th th that's why I love whiskey. I know that's why a lot of people here love whiskey as well. But Marco, what about you? How did you get into it? Yeah, I joined I joined uh, Whiskey Facile later, of course, because uh, um, I'm a journalist. Uh, actually, I work as a vice director for a political newspaper here in Milan. 
And uh, I've been always loving whiskey and enjoying whiskey, but I didn't have time or, um, you know, there's something you can, you have been always wanted to do, but you have never had the chance to do it. So um, in, I think, 2015, or 16, I can't remember, I, I, um, I made a press tour in, on Isla and uh, I f- completely fell in love with the culture of Scotch. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a, a quite s- mm, strange Italian because I love rainy weather. I love uh, <laughs> cold weather. So uh, uh, definitely Scotland is my, my place to be. <laughs> and so I started to get involved in whiskey. I started to read articles and write uh, uh, reviews on my newspaper. I have a little column every every Saturday, and uh, so I I began to uh, attend the festivals. And I met those two guys. And uh, I remember I was uh, surfing on the on the website, and I visited this website. And uh, I, I read these reviews very, very different from the others because they were uh, very uh, informal. They were very funny. And uh, there was also a, a, a link with um, a videotape uh, by new, on YouTube with a song con- connected to the, to the whiskey. And there were a lot of m- m- heavy metal songs. <laughs> and I said, wow. Oh, uh, scotch whiskey and uh, dark metal, scotch whiskey and, and grunge met- music. So uh, it was it was really funny. And uh, when I met the guys, uh, they they were also funny. Uh, <laughs> I mean, meeting them, it was fun. Mm-hmm. And so I decided to to um, help them. Of course, just just not not to. To drink and not to taste, just for uh, of course not. Of few course readers. Not. Uh, exactly. Because and you never, you never drink, Marco. No, 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 no. Of course, <laughs> of course. Of course. Now, I think that's very, very funny, Marco. You must have been one of the only people in the last two hundred years who has gone to Isla before being a whiskey fan. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> And I'm sure there's a lot of whiskey fans here tonight that have never been that and are very jealous of you as well. <laughs> you had it. I, I defy anyone to go to Isla and not fall in love with whiskey. It is just an incredible place, um, yeah. and it kind of it's 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 said a lot, and it's maybe a bit of a cliche, but it does operate on its own time and in its own culture. It's an incredible little place. But it, that's incredible that you got to go to Isla before really knowing a yes, lot about. That's true. That's true. I, I, I mean, I, I, uh, I used to drink some whiskeys, of course, but I, I wasn't did you? completely into the, this world. Now, now, did you drink them from a screw cap as well, or were you a little bit more refined? <laughs> no, I, I wasn't so grunge. So I, I used to drink it uh, in, I mean, quite popular bar, but not from screw cups. Yeah, Che Francis has just messaged in saying that she's only been to one distillery so far and she lives in Scotland. That needs to change. I think that's an interesting thing because, and I don't know if you guys experience this living in Italy as well, but I think we're quite often blind to what we've got on our doorsteps. You know, where I live in the Highlands of Scotland, I'm half an hour or so away from Loch Ness and Urquhart Castle and all these incredible things that people, when they come to Scotland, want to go and visit. And I've maybe been twice in my life. And I know you guys are are you both in Milan, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But Italy is by no means the biggest country in the world, but I dare say it's probably been a very long time since you guys went to the Colosseum or the Leaning Tower of Pisa and stuff, right? I don't know. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I think that Marco, uh, uh, maybe Marco, you, oh, we've lost Marco. Uh, you, have you ever been to Rome, Marco? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, no worries. Have you, ever, sorry. Have, you ever, have you ever been to Rome? I've ever been sorry to Rome. Yes, yes, I've ah, okay. been to Rome, but I've never At been southern we... than Rome. Uh, uh, there is there, there there's something, yeah, you know, under Rome. <laughs> if you ever, yeah, I know. If you ever have a, a spare week, maybe maybe you can. Not so much something. whiskey there. 
No, that's true. That's true. That's true. You've got is it, is it Pino Peron in in Rome? Pino yep. Peroni. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, with an incredible little whiskey shop. But, um, probably for the best that I didn't realise that was there when I was in Rome on my honeymoon. I think my wife would have divorced me very quickly if I knew that that shop was there. When I first went to Rome. Um, so, most important question of the evening, gent. What do you have in your glass right now? What are you drinking? Well, I, I'm drinking a spectacular drum. I'm having the very last drops of a sample of, of the last batch of uh, tomatin in uh, 1976. Oh, wow. So it's really a stunning drum. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I, I don't know if, I, if I'll ever be able to, to drink it because just nosing it is a, is a stunning experience. I mean, you, so, I mean, it, it changes at every breath. It's so, you, you get the tropical food, you get the woxiness, you get the, the, the woodiness. I mean, it's... Uh, Lovely, lovely stuff. Lovely stuff. Yeah, that, that, that will be an incredible whiskey. I'm, I'm very jealous of you right now, but I know exactly what you mean. Most whiskeys that you can spend half an hour nosing and not even really want to drink it just because it smells so good. I've got exactly. I always find that those 1976s have a real, there is an aroma very similar to walking into a Dunnage warehouse. It's and so true. Been in those uh, buildings that you know that smell. And I have to tell you that one of my greatest experiences in, in, in Scotland was uh, tasting a couple of uh, casks from 1976 in, uh, in your house with, uh, with Scott Fraser and, uh, and Graham that, uh, that just popped in at a certain point. Yeah. Just long. I mean, it's uh, breathtaking, as I said, it's impressive. <laughs> pretty, pretty special uh, thing to do. Mark you heard, you heard, right? I, I I tried to 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 look for um, the 36 years old tomatin, but I, I finished the sample weeks ago, <laughs> so uh, I I went for uh, tomatin 12. Okay, nice. Well, it's, it's very yeah, kind. Very of nice. Very, very, very clean. Yeah. Yeah. Very it, nice it, it, a, a beautiful daily drinking whiskey, right? It's yes. you've got you've both got the two opposite ends of the tomato spectrum, and then you've got the, yeah. the daily drinker, and Jacopo is sitting there with the, the once in a lifetime dram for some folks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fantastic. Now, um, no, 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 Scott, you have to tell us what are you drinking because I can't I, believe that your, your Glencairn is empty. Yeah, no, my Glencairn has a little drop in it. I'm drinking a um, 2009 Caribbean rum edition. Ah, okay. I've, uh, Great. Great. It's one of those whiskies that every so often I go into it and I just fall in love with it for a couple of weeks and then I'll move on to something else. But right now, I'm really enjoying this whiskey. So, yeah, slander, guys. Slander. Now, we've, mm. I feel I've done a very good job on this stream of never really talking about the current situation, never really talking about the dreaded COVID 19. But I think. Most people watching their everything that they would have heard about during the last couple of months would have been maybe a negative thing. We all know that Italy was one of the first countries to really have outbreak to have lockdown. What's the situation in Italy now? Are things starting to change? Uh, yes, in, it is. I mean, uh, we, we've uh, we've been through a couple of uh, tough months especially here in, in Milan and close to Milan, because uh, uh, the, the Lombardy, this region, was the, the, the most affected region uh, in, in all Italy. And we had, we had some uh, uh, some friends and relatives that had uh, issues with the, with the COVID, so it, it, was, uh, it wasn't so easy. But in the end, uh, we, I mean, the, the real life, the normal life is, is, is getting back. And it's, uh, I, I mm, I remember that the, the, the very first times that I managed to, to, to meet my friends, even if just outside and with, with, with the mask on, I mean, it felt, it felt so good. Because, yeah. okay, it's, it's, it's nice, of course, to, to, to chat on, uh, on, on Zoom, uh, on, uh, on, on Skype and whatever, but still it's, uh, it's, it's something else, <laughs> you know. So it's, it really, really felt great. And uh, I, I wasn't sure that it would have been so, but it's really, really nice to, to be able to, to get back to, to the people. Mm -hmm. but, uh, 
And now uh, bars uh, are open too, and restaurants too. So we are trying to to, to get back slowly to, to to the normal life. But yeah. I mean, I think that we we can't really complain for the situation right now. We'll see what what will happen, uh, of course, in in autumn. But uh, for now, we. Uh, I, 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 yeah, I must add that uh, we, we, we need some pleasure now because uh, it, it has been such a tough time. So uh, whiskey is one of the best pleasure in life. So I think it's time to enjoy definitely and relaxing with a glass of whiskey and some chat with friends and sharing opinions. And so there is a kind of... Uh, uh, a uh, huge need for this this stuff yeah yeah I, I had a phone call with jacopo earlier on today just in organizing this and i think we, we were both of the opinion that there are many many bad things to come from all this of course this is not a situation that anyone wants to be in but there are some silver linings there are some positives and one of them that i've noticed is the the opportunities that us as whiskey fans have had over the last couple of months to um, attend virtual tastings and engage yeah. with um, distillery managers and things like that that we wouldn't otherwise get. And um, last night I was in a, a Delphi tasting and it was an exceptional tasting that I otherwise wouldn't be able to attend. So yeah. these little things have helped um, helped us through, but it's great to hear that you guys are starting to move back towards what we would call normal. That's great to hear. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Definitely. And what about the the softer side of the Highlands? How's uh, how's your lockdown going? Yeah, it's. I mean, there's there's people who have had a worse time than I have. You know, um, where where I live, north of Inverness, there's so much space anyway that social distancing to an extent is part of daily life anyway. I really feel for people that have been living in cities and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I think the, the toughest thing from our point of view has not been to see families and things like that, but that's starting to come back to normal. So, yeah, no, we're we're slowly, I think, making steps in the same direction that you guys are, and hopefully that will continue. But that is, has ticked the COVID box. This is week 12, uh, and it's the first time we, we've mentioned that word. So, uh, <laughs> no, I want to get your guys' thoughts because obviously everything that we've been hearing I think a lot of the time in the news, and, and Marco, you, you are uh, well placed to, to to handle this one. A lot of the time, we hear the the negative things about the outbreak in Italy, about the lockdown. There's never a, a, a headline in the news about Italy moving into stage two. You know, um, so n not in the UK anyway. So it's great for you guys to be able to tell everyone tonight what what's going on. So, uh, well, the, the the stage two here uh, as beginning in, in, uh, in a real m m messy mood because the, mm, there, were, there were such uh, different rules, such uh, uh, problems, such issues uh, and the social distancing to respect and uh, a lot of regulations. It's, so we are trying to, to, to learn how to, how to approach our yeah. stage two but um i must say that uh, usually italians are uh, not particularly respectful of laws but uh, in, in 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 this sit in this situation uh, uh, I, I must say we we were quite good at it yeah. good. so not 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 bad definitely yeah so let's let's go back to whiskey let's go back to italy and maybe go through the history a little bit because i read a fascinating stat when i was uh, i mean i've always found the italian whiskey market to be an incredible one but i read earlier on today that at one point in the 1970s glenn grant were selling 500,000 half a million cases of whiskey every year to italy alone and for everyone that's listening that sounds like a big number but to put it into perspective Today, the biggest brand in the world is Glenfiddich, and they sold 1.4 million cases globally last year. So in the 1970s, before single malt was even a thing, Italy was consuming a third of Glenfiddich's global. Uh, I th that is just fascinating. What, what happened? How did that come about? How did Italy really um, become the flag bearer for single malt when everyone else was drinking blended whiskey? 
I, I, I'll say I'll say what I think, and then Marco, I'll, I'll leave it yep. to you. Uh, it's, I mean, the the the, the fact is, I, I in my opinion, is that we we have uh, of course a, a strong culture of uh, of quality food and quality drinks because uh, we have uh, a, a, an impressive variety of uh, as i said of, of, of food and, uh, and and prime matters and uh, and wines so we're kind of uh, used to to the complexity and it's something that we uh, even if maybe we, we don't really know that we are looking for it but we we do look for it so um i and and then we we generally speaking i mean we're curious people so i think that uh, i mean the, the, the very first uh, uh, blends uh, came uh, in, in italy in uh, i think it, it was marco in 1906 uh, or something I, like I, that. the first blend uh, arrived in italy at the end of 19th century oh, and uh, uh, and it was johnny walker yeah. Yes, and Wax and uh, Vitale, Vitale was the first importer of Johnny Walker whiskey in 1906. So uh, 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 there, there were, there was of course uh, uh, a huge demand for luxury things. Of course, when uh, two world wars stopped this kind of um, demand, and uh, during the 60s, at the end of the 50s, uh, during the 60s with the economic boom so, um, there was again another huge demand for this luxury stuff Jacopo said uh, Italy is a wine drinking nation we are obsessed by this stuff so um, there were uh, some guys uh, Silvano Sammaroli uh, Rino Mainardi Giorgio D'Ambrosio these guys uh, started uh, traveling to Scotland and uh, when they 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 remember um, these travels uh, uh, with uh, some uh, uh, coaches uh, in 20 peoples so uh, very very interesting during the 60s and no no light on the streets in scotland so uh, difficult to communicate because uh, so some of them uh, didn't didn't speak a perfect English, of course, and um, so it was really really challenging. And they traveled for maybe two weeks, uh, visiting every kind of distillery and uh, mm, cherry picking the casks because uh, uh, single malt distilleries uh, um, had a, a, a huge stock of single malt, and they simply used to sell it. So. It was a I, kind of paradise. I, I, I remember uh, um, Rino Mainardi, who was the founder of uh, Sestante and Silver Seal uh, brand. Uh, I remember that once he said that uh, uh, he, he used to go to the, to the distilleries and to the warehouses asking for um, to, to try casks. And, uh, and distillery managers, they said, well, why do you want to, 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 to taste this, this, this stuff? I mean, we, we're full of blends. We have lots of quality blends. Well, why do you want this stuff? So it was, uh, I mean, of course, they were uh, uh, in, in some way, they were lucky because they were the, the only ones trying to, to, to look for single cut which is quite different from <laughs> from today's market of course uh, but they 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 really uh, had the chance to uh, i don't know how to to, to, to become friends with yeah. with, uh, with people working in the distilleries because they, they just were the only one interested in what these distilleries were doing so uh, one of the things that Mm, I mean, it always hit me about uh, about the, the, the all the, the tales that are uh, uh, saying Giorgio and uh, and uh, Silvano when when he was alive, of course, uh, is that uh, they. I mean, I, I always remember uh, Giorgio D'Ambrosio used to sleep in uh, in in Mr. Urquhart's uh, uh, office yeah. in uh, in Gordon and McPhail. Yeah, wow. because it's. Uh, I mean, he, he he didn't have a place to stay, so they, they were just friends. And say, so, okay, you, they you were friends. Can yeah. sleep here, and it's something yeah. that, of course, would never happen today. I mean, and, I, and, and I, Mr. And Mr. Urquhart used to come to Italy for his mm -hmm. uh, uh, vacation and his holidays, and uh, his his sons uh, uh, remember that uh, 
their father was uh, a kind of king, <laughs> treated like a king in Italy. But because the, 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 there was such a strong relationship between these men. And I, I think, I mean, when you, when you talk about the Uckerts as well, I, I've, I've read their them talking about Italy before and very much what you say that it was like their their father walked on a cloud. I think what's what's interesting as well is that he was probably one of the few people in Scotland that realised what the, his Italian counterparts did and that was the quality of single malt. You know, he was buying casks of single malt from distilleries who were otherwise putting a lot of whiskey into blends. Um, so there, there would have been an affinity there just in their their, their passion for the liquid as well. Yes, I agree. And the, um, what I love about whiskey is that uh, uh, is that th there's always, I mean, it, it is the, the human side of, of the whiskey people, and uh, it, and it's it, it's like this nowadays. So I just ca can't even imagine how how it was in in, in the '60s. So yeah. uh, you just imagine something coming to Tomatin, the, the the very first foreign person that you you get to to, to visit Tomatin, asking, okay, but what are you doing here? Can I can I can I taste something uh, that, that that you produce? I mean, it's uh, it's something that that I mean, it uh, moves you in some way. I, I, and then I, I was really um, I was I. I I, I'm really jealous, of course, of those times because, <laughs> because you you could get uh, wonderful stuff for I mean not for nothing but but kind of of course the prices are, are quite different from from nowadays. But for, 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 I, yeah, for example, for this in 1972, a bottle of Macallan, 37 years old, distilled in 1935, was sold in Italy at four. Pounds point fifty four. <laughs> That's the cost of a bottle of IPA beer now. Yeah, definitely. Exactly. definitely. That's, <laughs> That's true. ridiculous. Um, wow. And then, and then another thing that I love when when you talk about people uh, that that used to drink whiskey in those days is that I mean. Uh, it was not, uh, you know, a collector's item. When when you think of the, the, the diffusion of Macallans, uh, think of the, all, all those vintage Macallans, the, the, the eighteen year old and stuff uh, imported by Rinaldi and Giovinetti and stuff. Uh, they were just uh, bottles to, to to be drank. I mean, there, there was they were not collectibles. They were not uh, uh, pricey luxury items. They were just. Uh, um, <laughs> Let me put it like this: uh, a good booze, <laughs> you know, and yeah. and and that's so. That's what make me makes me really well, jealous. Uh, uh, at four pound fifty a bottle, I think I would quite happily open and uh, thirty seven. <laughs> we all have, wish to have that option. Scott, we need a a time machine. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were born in the wrong time. I feel. Yeah. <laughs> so there's two things going on that I can see because. What you've got is some distilleries bottling whiskey for Italy uh, under their own brand for the first time ever. Uh, Johan Blom from uh, Sweden was in right at the top of the chat saying that he loves some of those old 70s Glen Grants that were bottled by Glen Grant for Italy. Mm -hmm. Ourselves, personally, some of the oldest bottles in our archive at Tomatin have the Italian strip stamp on them. Um, mm -hmm. So, so it's something that we were doing as as well, and I think a lot of the the brands that did develop early on did so because of the the passion from Italy. But then on the other side, you've got this really really interesting thing, and that is these incredible independent bottlers that you mentioned, the guys coming over to Scotland, and I love that idea because coming to the the small villages and townships where these distilleries are in the Highlands in the nineteen seventies some of the villages that you went to might not have seen someone from Edinburgh in 10 years, you know? So so when somebody comes over from Milan and says, I would love to try your whiskey and buy some, <laughs> I think what that initial uh, conversation was, it was like, that would have been incredible to be a fan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Scott, you're, you're freezed. Yeah, we lost you. Anyway, Marco, while <laughs> while, <laughs> while Scott comes back, <laughs> we can. No, it, it, it's too. It, it must have been just just so so strange. I mean, 
and, uh, I, I, and also, I, I, also for, 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 for Italians to, to go there. Hi, Scott. You're back again. Hey, sorry, sorry. You're back. I'm having a little bit of internet trouble during the day, so sorry about that. But um, no yeah, I, I know you guys carried on the conversation, so I'll let you keep going there. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were just saying that it must have been uh, really, really strange to have uh, people from abroad, as you said, trying mm -hmm. to in what, in, in what you were producing. And, but I think that this created a, a really strong link and a really strong bond between uh, mm. the, 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 the Scotch whiskey industry and, uh, and the Italian market, at, at, at least at the time, at least at the time. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, 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 and at the yeah. same, no, no, please. No, no, no. go, go, please, please, please. No, at the same time, uh, the, there was some, another phenomenon that, that, that happened in Italy, that people started collecting whiskeys. Usually, people started collecting uh, uh, miniatures, and then uh, just wanted to 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 have uh, bigger toys, you know. <laughs> so uh, started collecting bottles. I, I remember I was talking with uh, Valentino Zagatti, who was uh, in the in the world Guinness record for for the biggest uh, whiskey collection for mm, I think decades, yeah. and um, he used to say that uh, he when when he started collecting whiskey, he just wanted to have one bottle from every spirit produced in the world. Then he discovered that, oh, wow, this, this Scotch whiskey is pretty, is pretty good and it's pretty complex and it's pretty different. So he started uh, collecting uh, one bottle for, for every distillery. And in the 70s, it was really, really hard to do because there were just just few single malt bottles as, as, as such. He used, so, he, used to write, he used to write letters to distilleries. Yeah, to have all the all the bottles from the distillery. And uh, again, this is uh, is uh, is so so different from today. I mean, you you, you really could have a, a, a personal uh, contact with with people involved in uh, in in production and uh, in, in sales of, uh, of 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 Scotch whiskey. So it was yeah. really really another world, I think. Uh, yeah. really I, really world. I I think that the, those guys invented two things they invented the italian taste for single malt and they invented the the whiskey collect collectors uh, uh you talk you talk about the independent bottlers and of course they had the the incredible opportunity and the incredible chance to to choose and bottle in, in impressive stuff portel and mostawi and everything oh ever everything and uh but um, one of them, uh, uh, Giovinetti, um, decided to uh, bottle uh, official, officer of sorry, official uh, whiskey uh, from uh, from Glen Grant, and he chose uh, the five years old only for Italy, and it was such a, a, an incredible success because it was sold at the same price of a blend. So, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, Glen Grant started uh, um, to be on the shelves of uh, uh, luxury hotels, and then he moved uh, in, in great distribution. And now in, in Italy, ev every single bar has a, a bottle of Glen Grant five years old. And uh, uh, it was a, such a revolution. It was a, an incredible revolution. Uh, and instead of talking about the collecting, collecting um, you know, I Italy has a, a also a, a great taste for beautiful things and for history. Mm -hmm. So uh, whiskey bottles are definitely beautiful and they are full of history. Yes. So they're the perfect item to collect. Yeah, it's 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 funny. That is the reason that I love Italy as well as a, a fan of beautiful food, drinking history. That's that's why I'm happy about Italy. But it does make sense. To tie in whiskey, you know, it, it is again going back to what we were saying earlier about our thought on it being the best spirit in the world. History goes along with it. Other spirits have history, but I think the the conversation around around the history of it is on a different level from what you see elsewhere. Now, you were saying uh, it was a different world. Luna Aaron has asked, um, what 
is how would you describe the Italian whiskey market? And I guess what she means is how would you describe the Italian whiskey market today? Well, uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's a complex market, let's say, because uh, um, first of all, uh, we've we've been through a, a, a pretty big, huge crisis in uh, in the last decade, so. Uh, people uh, kind of stopped buying uh, expensive stuff, basically, and expensive drinks. Uh, but uh, um, at, uh, let's say at, at the low level of, 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 the, of the, the, the whole uh, Scotch whiskey category. So uh, they kept uh, uh, buying uh, uh, top-notch stuff, let's say. And um, I think this is interesting because if in terms of quantity, Italy isn't a big market, but in terms of quality, it still is, uh, I think, a, a huge market. You, you, you happen to see in, in a lot of restaurants and bars, you know, single cups or um, uh, old single malls, which is not, which is not so common elsewhere. Uh, so it's it's easier in Italy to find uh, uh, quality single malts than, than than cheap blends, let's say. Mm. And uh, I think that's that's from a view from above. Then of course we're we're peatheads basically. So we we love peat, and uh, I think uh, again it's a, it's a cultural thing because uh, 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 smoked uh, uh, aromas are not just you know part of our culture. So it's yeah. something different that when when you when you yeah. smell for, for the first time exotic. In, 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 exactly it, it is exotic it's something that you've never ever uh, smelled and, and tasted before so usually it was the same for me too because the, the very first bottle of, of single malt that I've bought uh, before going to Edinburgh <laughs> were Taliska, Lagavulin, and Kulaila, Ardbeg's you know those smoky uh, and uh, and coastal whiskies that were just uh, something else from yeah. whatever you, you you can find and then after usually that's how it works uh, after you you, you start uh, getting into pitted whiskey you discover that there, there is something else you know that the pitted whiskey is just a small percentage of the the, the of all the whiskey that, that, that is produced in scotland and uh, so you start uh, uh, getting through all those, those nuances that uh, i mentioned before so i think that's that's the the the, the how the, the the market right now is 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 moving and uh i have to say that in 10 years time so since uh, from, from the very first year that we we opened the blog uh it really really changed uh and you can you can just see it in uh if you look at the the, the, the most important whiskey festival that you have in, in italy which is milan whiskey festival uh I think Marco at the, the very first uh, edition they had uh, 300 people yeah uh, yes. in, in the weekend and uh, last yeah. year so 14 years later uh, there were uh, almost 6000 people yeah. uh, in, in two days which is really really impressive and then another thing when when uh, when we first started uh, walking in, into a whiskey festival we were by far the youngest people around, and uh, mm -hmm. so I think that this helped also uh, to to uh, our way of communicating whiskey. But maybe we'll we'll talk about it later. And um, uh, nowadays, you get a lot of people in the twenties or uh, in the thirties walking and really curious about what they're doing. And um, mm -hmm. uh, the thing that I really like, since I'm, I'm working uh, at whiskey festival, so I'm. Uh, I'm, I'm working at the the, the whiskey stand, is that people uh, want to know everything about what they're doing. So of course it's uh, mm, these are uh, years of uh, you know spectacular spectacularization is that right of uh, of food and beverage. You know the Marco I think uh, called it today the, the yeah. Marco Chef syndrome or something like that. Yeah yeah the Marco the, the Chef killer. syndrome. P people are really eager to to have uh, uh, details. So, uh, from, from an industry point of view, you, you, when you're working, you, you need to be not just a, a brand expert, but you need to be a, a category expert. So, you need to be uh, to be passionate about what you're what what you're selling. Let's say because 
that's what people want. And the fact that I, uh, I'm, I'm working in, in the industry since uh, just two years now, and um, I had a completely different life. And I, I didn't open the blog because I wanted to, to work in the industry. I just opened the blog because that's what I liked. And, uh, for fun, exactly, and uh, and I think this this helps us in communicating whiskey because uh, uh, we we just as I said we're passionate about whiskey, so we like to talk about whiskey. So when when we we get to a festival and you start talking to people, you select stands that have people that will tell you uh, the truth basically. So they'll tell you what 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 is whiskey and and not uh, okay uh, you know crappy stuff, uh, crappy marketing stuff uh, that uh, they, they, they read on, uh, on the presentation on, uh, on yeah. the day before. And yeah. so I'm, uh, I'm really, really happy actually, I have to say, because uh, I'm seeing that, that people are really interested in knowing details. So yeah, for and the, the, the like, more, yeah, like, yeah. Wonderful. The, the, the more impressive thing I, I think is uh, there is a cross-generational audience now at the whiskey festival um, because uh, i think 60 percent of the visitors at the last uh, milan whiskey festival was uh, under 35 years old and uh, more than 1500 were women but it's quite impressive for italy uh, because of, of a cultural thing of course and um, uh, talking about pete um Giorgio D'Ambrosio used to 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 remember when for the first time he um offered a, a bottle of peated whiskey to his customers and he had this customer who um, uh, was organizing a, a dinner with some friends from England so um he gave him a Pete Glengarry and a few days later the customer came back to Giorgio and said, when I opened it, I smell it and I, I think it's rotten. So uh, <laughs> it, 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 the, the, the taste of, of the Italian taste for whiskey has changed a lot. Yeah. And um, the, 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 the peat sorry, is very recognizable. So if you, if you are not into the whiskey if you are uh, um, uh, you are beginning to to drink whiskey you 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 immediately recognize the pt whiskey so uh, you you want it because you you, are, you know what you are going to drink yeah let's see it's that's and, an interesting uh, thing. Uh, one one thing is uh, um, that the in during the last the, the during the last years um a lot of new independent bottlers um popped out in popped up sorry in italy and so there is a, a a huge range of new expressions and so there are a lot of different tastes and a lot of this uh, different the styles and so it's funny yeah it's it's interesting what you were saying about Pete there. Um, on Sunday, I'm going to be joining the guys over at Lag Distillery um, on their stream. Um, I think it's on Facebook, and, and we're talking about Pete. You know, so there's there's four of us going to be going on talking about Pete. That's obviously what they're going to be known for. And it's interesting just doing a bit of research into the history how Pete for a long time was, or, or smoke in whiskey for a long time was regarded as an off note. You know, um, mm -hmm. when you the, the two big boom periods in whiskey historically. Uh, one of them was when we started getting to add grain whiskey to those big peaty malts, and the second one was when we actually started moving away from peated barley in the Highlands in the in the sixties and things. But it's interesting what what you're saying there is that the, the Italians have a deep rooted love for peat that it seems that the rest of the world really opened up to in the last. I, I guess you could extend it to twenty years, but. Uh, it's really only been since around the early 2000s that peat globally has been desired, shall we say. Uh, but it sounds like he's had a, a love of it for a long time before that. Yeah, th think of the phase aisle. I mean, uh, just 10 years ago, there were maybe 500 people going to, to the phase aisle. Now there are, there are lots of, uh, of tents with, uh, I think, thousands of people uh, staying, staying uh, on Isla for for days i mean it's uh, 
it's really it's really really different and uh, it's I, I guess it's a good thing uh, for 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 the for the whole category of course even if as a whiskey drinker it's getting uh, always uh, more expensive to get <laughs> to get some kind of of whiskey but still well that, I'm I'm glad you you raised that because. You know, let's let's talk about whiskey fatuli. We, we're talking about Italy, where there are some of the most magnificent collections of single malt whiskey in the world, and it's, I mean, these are all unicorn whiskies that you'll never see again, and the cost of opening a bottle would bring you to tears. But then you guys come in, I think it was 2011 or so, and you make a point of reviewing affordable, available whiskies. You know, it's you're not talking about these. Um, expensive dram so much that it was more the bringing people closer to whiskey why did why did you where did you see the gap for whiskey fatuli and why did you set that up with that intention? basically uh, it, it was out of necessity i have to say because we just couldn't afford <laughs> expensive whiskey so we we, we only could, uh, could could talk about i mean the the all uh, the, the the all uh, whiskey fa whiskey fatula, which means easy whiskey in, in italian the the, the all um, your whiskey whiskey fatula thing really uh, grew, uh, began and grew up as a, a really a, a natural thing because uh, at the time we, we used to drink what what we could what, what we could find uh, basically so we we didn't want i mean we we really felt that uh, maybe it was kind of a generational thing but we were in the in our late 20s uh, I, I was at the, the university i was i just started my phd and so i, I of course I, I didn't have so so, so much money to, to spend on uh, on whiskey but I, I really felt that the the whiskey world were uh, was selling itself as a old man with great moustache uh, on a Chesterfield couch uh, uh, sipping their, their very clever uh, drama while talking about politics uh, while drinking a cigar. So it was really, really stereotyped. And what we mm -hmm. want to do, since we, we really felt uh, uh, real love for for, for the for, for, for whiskey, and when we used to talk with other with, with our friends and okay, try try this, try that. I mean, we, we could see that the people were interested in in, in whiskey, so it, it was it was not something uh, uh, distant, you know, as as in some way it was it was felt. So we really wanted to to, to let people join this, this this passion because we wanted to to share this passion with with other people. And of course, we use the, the the language that that we knew. So we we first of all, it, it was not a job, and still it isn't. So we we want to have fun when we write reviews. So uh, sometimes we write we write uh, you know weird things, but it's we, we need to have fun too. And then we we, we want we wanted to give okay. Then in, in during the years, we we we've also reviewed some expensive stuff. Luckily, but uh, but but still, our main focus w w would be on affordable stuff because we we're talking uh, about bottles that we would buy. That's uh, that's the the whole point. I mean, of course, sometimes we will also uh, talk about bottles that we would want to buy, but we can't. But if we manage to get a sample, it's <laughs> it's still okay. But yeah. still, uh, we 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 wanted to to to. To share this this passion in, in a very natural way, as I said. So we we didn't build the 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 the, the, the blog just because we wanted to be influencer or stuff. It really really didn't happen like that. And uh, to to I mean I want to 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 tell you an uh, an anecdote an anecdote uh, well, anecdote about uh, Giacomo. <laughs> Sorry, uh, my English has become a bit rusty uh, these days. Uh, about Giacomo, because we, we used to, we were, we were friends since high school, and uh, we used to share a flat in, in Milan uh, in, in the last years. And um, he used to work at night uh, at the time, because uh, he was working for a press review company. So he, he used to work at night. So we, have, we, 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 we didn't ever meet, actually. Because uh, of course he, he came uh, he came home uh, at nine uh, in the morning when I was going uh, going to, to 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 the university so we, we didn't really meet uh, I'm sorry for him because he he did he had a really poor social life but even having a poor social life he had just two evenings every week 
in which he could uh, meet friends and stuff. And still that week, uh, the, the, uh, one of those two nights was dedicated on uh, tasting and reviewing the whiskeys. And uh, sometimes uh, it happened that, uh, okay, he came home, he, he tasted the whiskey in, in the morning, he just left his tasting notes on, uh, on, on the table in, uh, in the kitchen. And when I came home at night, I, I, I took it and, and I wrote my tasting notes too. So just to, to build a review. So we, we, were, uh, we, we had our own uh, problems, <laughs> maybe mental problems. Uh, so <laughs> we, we, really, we really liked it. So, so it, it was uh, really natural. I I, th I think also that uh, we, we are both from the 80s and uh, during our youth the, the, there was this uh, advertising on the television of Glenn Grant and there was uh, this guy this oh, yeah. very very yeah, not very sympathetic n n yeah, yeah a, a little bit posh uh, and uh, uh, it was a manager and it was the connoisseur it was called it was called Michele and I think uh, it, 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 mm, whiskey facile style is a kind of personal war against this stereotype of whiskey <laughs> so only for rich men very polite very elegant very um, successful in life I mean whiskey is a pleasure and is a pleasure for everyone yeah I think that's it's quite funny because you know Despite the fact that it's all written in Italian, I mean, we live in a world where Google Translate exists, which is fantastic, but it, <laughs> it, it, the, the original concept was to do it in Italian because it simply didn't exist before, right? But you've gone to this place now where you have a, a global following, and I think that there's a couple of things going on there. Marco, to your point, there is a lot of people who feel that um, whiskey was never marketed to them you know so mm -hmm. they come to they learn about whiskey not through the traditional means of marketing but yeah but things with, like whiskey factually and then also with your approach of um trying whiskey that is available not just uh, an italian independent bottler people yes, can read it because somebody over in ukraine can find that same bottle in their shelf and and you see the the following that you guys have on on facebook and instagram now and it just continues to grow and grow and grow so it's did you ever see it uh, getting that big no uh, that, i know sorry no no, no, no come on come on come on please okay no definitely not actually i, I have to say uh that uh, I, I mean, we're here tonight, and uh, I, I'm I really feel honored of being here because I I really can't think of myself as a, you know as, as someone who has something to say about 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 whiskey. I, I don't know how to put it. I mean, it's uh, it's uh, and uh, we 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 are part of a, a niche of a niche because uh, we we're talking about single malts uh, just in Italian, so it's really. I, I really wasn't expecting that. And actually, I'll, I'll, I have to tell you that uh, it's, uh, you're the first one to know, actually. But uh, uh, our website will be offline, I think, this weekend, because uh, from, uh, from Monday, we launched a, a new version of the website. And we'll okay. also have the English version. So you won't have to, to click uh, on the left <laughs> and, and ask Google to translate it. So uh, uh, we're sorry because we, we started translating all the website in, in January. So we're, I mean, we have uh, 1,300 reviews and we, we just translated the, a small portion of it. So it will be a, a translation in progress. But still, yeah. we, we, we would like to to get, I mean, to make things easier for, for people that uh, feel this weird urge to read the, what we say and what we think about well, it. I'm glad because Marco mentioned earlier on that there is a, there is a sense of humor in, in your writing that is very refreshing. And sometimes Google Translate doesn't pick that up so well. Sometimes it gets <laughs> it. And I think sometimes it almost makes it even funnier because it's, it's, <laughs> Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I'm glad that that's going to be able to translate. Now, just as a little side away from Whiskey Factually, and I want to come back to it, of course, but um, Graham Fraser has asked the question, are there lots of whiskey clubs and live streams and after Whiskey Factually, other blogs in Italy right now? I mean, there's three fantastic festivals that I'm aware of in Rome, Milan, and Whiskey Revolution. I, I mean, yeah. the standard of... Castle yeah, the Frank, yeah. where the standard of 
uh, quality of Italian whiskey festivals is right up there with anywhere else in the world. But does that translate down to the, the local clubs, tastings, and, uh, and now that we're in this virtual world, the live streams? Uh, absolutely. May I? Okay. Yep. Uh, ab ab absolutely. Um, there are a, a lot of whiskey clubs um, popping up, and probably the main one is uh, Whiskey Club Italia. And uh, um, during the last uh, ten years, no, I I don't know how many years. No less. Ten I think years. No, no less. Five or seven. Six years. Oh, five. Uh, um, they yeah. had uh, more Money. than ten. 10,000 10, people attending uh, uh, tastings and uh, Milan, Whiskey Facile, uh, Milan Whiskey Festival guys are attending a lot of, uh, are holding, sorry, a lot of tastings and uh, even, even the, the, the bars, the bar scene here in Milan is, is uh, improving and uh, a lot of bars now they have uh, their own whiskey list with the proper uh, Glencairn glass. Uh, so it's, uh, I think it's uh, 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 the whole movement of whiskey is is improving in Italy. With with uh, uh, I mean, this is not going to be one of the best uh, drinking whiskey nation because uh, I I don't know the the last da data, but uh, I think two years ago. Uh, mm, every Italian used to consume uh, 0 0.2 liters per person. Uh, I mean, it's 10, 10, 10, it's 10 times, yes, exactly, 10 times less than France. Right. So, uh, yeah, uh, uh, I think we, we, we drink uh, less, but we, are, we often drink good stuff. Yeah, and, and the, the data reflects that as well. You know, France is the biggest market in the world for blended Scotch whiskey. But if you look at the, the data from Italy, and I must confess, I'm a little bit of a geek for for the data and I love <laughs> looking into it. But um, a third, in fact, more than a third of the whiskey sold in Italy is single malt. Yeah. Um, now, I think when, when, when we're talking in this context, it's very difficult to believe that blend is still the biggest whiskey in the world. You know, when we're talking about whiskey at such a level, but as you said, Jacopo, we are the niche of the niche. You know, um, most uh, globally, ninety percent of the whiskey sold is blended Scotch. So, de Italy is definitely punching the the single malt through still to this day. And that, that um, I mean, makes me also. Uh, want to say something that because uh, there are many uh, many companies and many distilleries who uh, are you know that they are just managed by by cold numbers let's say and uh, uh, you, you can you can feel that uh, uh, Italy is not one of the their key markets but uh, and so uh, all the special editions, uh, special releases, and stuff, uh, single cask and top notch stuff, they just don't don't even get to 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 Italy. Right. So uh, and and I think that's 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 uh, sort of of an own goal, you know, because uh, um, since we are a market that's really. Uh, um, that that has a great thirst for for uh, thirst for quality. If if you if you let's say if you feed us with with quality stuff, then we'll we'll also appreciate the brand as a whole, and so yeah. we'll, we'll start the, the whole the whole movement will uh, will will gain uh, something from from it. I mean, in um, I, I think that it's uh, for, for example, I, I know that that you everything that you release comes to to Italy. And yeah. in the last years, uh, the, the mm, mm, Tomatins public here in Italy has really, really grown. And I guess that your, your figures can, can confirm that. Because, uh, and, and it depends also on, you know, I, I remember when Scott uh, Fraser came to, to Castelfranco uh, last year for the for Whiskey Revolution Festival. And uh, he opened, he brought, I think, uh, 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 for a tasting uh, uh, a cask sample of, uh, of uh, 76. And uh, at the tasting, there was the 30 year old, and there were qu really 36 too. 36 too. So, of course, you, you make, I mean, you, you 
you make a living uh, uh, selling uh, the, the uh, cheaper things, of course. But but this this top quality bottles help you to 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 bring the I mean to, to bring the people uh, to be really aware of of what what you do. So uh, I think that uh, and, and then another thing, uh, people uh, in Italy buy a lot of of whiskeys, but they they just buy it abroad because they, they, there are bottles that don't even come to Italy. So right. there, there, there was, I was talking with, uh, with Max Righi, uh, the, the owner of uh, Whiskey Antique uh, and uh, Silver Seal brand right now. And uh, he, used to, uh, he used to say that uh, while, while talking with, with, with some, some manager of a, of, of a big distillery, he said, uh, okay, it's true that Italians, uh, that you don't sell so many bottles to, to Italy, but Italians buy a lot of your bottles they just bought they just buy it uh, abroad yeah yeah which is uh, a bad thing for for italian market too because if you if you go on buying stuff abroad your market will never will never grow so um, let's buy things from from our markets guys because it's important <laughs> yeah i see marcus popped out there but i'm sure he'll come back in and when he does i'll i'll, I'll get him back on screen but no that's a very interesting point i think yeah that becomes a little bit of a downward spiral then you know because exactly. if, if the numbers can if people in italy continue to buy in france and things like this because that's where the releases are and it's understandable you'd want to do that and get a hold of those whiskies um then the the figures in italy are going to continue to go down and then the producers are not going to so yeah that is that's a tough situation to be in but um an interesting one nonetheless because like you say i think we have been very well aware of that. And uh, Maurizio, who we're, we're both friends with, was very clear about that from the beginning when, when we started working with him. So um, we've known for a very long time that there will be a, a thirst for quality in Italy and that by supplying that thirst, your your core range and your standard products will have a wider appeal as well, which is a great way to build a business, right? Yeah, but I really think so. Instead of you know uh, pushing all, as I said before, all the uh, you know the, these these marketing uh, presentations that you really you really feel that they're cold. I mean, yeah. now every brand is uh, you know has its own heritage. is uh, all about the tradition, all about the terroir, and all about uh, you know craftsmanship. Well, uh, the, the beautiful thing about Scotch whiskey is that every distillery is different and every whiskey is completely different. So, uh, and, and people want, want these this differences. I mean, they, they don't want to, to, to hear the, the, always the, the, the same story because it's just boring and, and, and you perceive it is, uh, 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 as, a, as a fake-ish stuff. So you want you you just want uh, truth and uh, transparency and traceability. These are the the, the main uh, things that we we want here in Italy. I think. Yeah, I, I think that's that's starting to be the case further afield as well. You know, traceability, the the the, the transpar transparency and the, the quality are definitely things that people are looking for uh, globally, virtually now, which is fantastic because we're lucky to have a quality product that we like to talk about. So um, there's maybe some regulations in between the customer and the uh, distiller that don't always allow us to to say everything that we want to, but I think our goals are the same, certainly a distillery like us. Now, Italy as well, from, from the time that I've spent there, seems to have, we've talked a lot about Italy as a whiskey market in the 70s and the, and the uh, independent bottlings and things, but there seems to be quite a thriving um, new sort of whiskey scene in the sense that I'm starting to see a lot more uh, cocktail bars opening up and uh, utilising the, the, the quality of single malt whiskies in their drinks and stuff like that. Is that something that you're noticing? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, I, I, of course, in, in, in Italy, we have a, a great culture of, of cocktail bars. And because you you know we, we like Bella Vita as you know so we, <laughs> we like to have drinks in fancy places, but um, 
and I really think, and I was going to, to, to I wanted to say it before, but uh, I, I forgot to mention it. And I think that uh, a big part uh, right now in the in the, the current booming of whiskey in Italy is is has been played by by cocktail bars, because you, you as I mean as customers as are more private people, um, lo whiskey lovers are uh, always eager to have more information. Same is with uh, with with, bar, with bartenders, so they they want to have. Uh, uh, quality uh, ingredients for the for the cocktails. I mean, I remember that there is this uh, wonderful whiskey bar. I mean, it's a cocktail bar. It's a speakeasy in Milan. It's called uh, 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 1930. Uh, it's a, it's a speakeasy, and it's just gotten in the in the in the 50 best. And I remember it's. Uh, I think they started working on uh, 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 using single malts uh, in mixology and trying to communicate this. Uh, to to the customers, I think five years ago, and and now if you go there and and if you go in most of Milan's whiskey uh, cocktail bars, you will find a lot, uh, a really lot, uh, a real lot of of of, uh, of single malts, and um, um, you know, uh, the f three, four, five years ago, uh, bartenders were scared of using single malts and they, this this they still are i mean i used to do uh, trainings uh, to to bartenders and to to i mean uh, uh tastings um to, to to bartenders to to explain uh, scotch whiskey and you still uh, feel that they kind of they they kind of scared because of, no okay it's it's too complex it's uh, i can't use it it's great on its own which of course it's true because it's uh, great on its own and uh, and it's true that it's complex but if if uh, you find the right way to respect the the spirit and to um to communicate the spirit through the the cocktail you really uh, are able to get people into whiskey so i really think and uh, I, I really think that cocktail bars are are doing a, a great great job and uh, it's even even uh, a better job sometimes that companies uh, uh, do because uh, uh, you know uh, they just spread the word from from one cocktail bar to to another bar so people just gets gets curious of course they want to to get to the uh, you know not not so common stuff so it's it's really really interesting because yeah. it's uh, you're seeing that th there is a culture that, that that's moving towards whiskey. It's not about about you know a, a random booze. It's really um, something I, I think stronger. So um, and hopefully this, this will will stay in the future because uh, I think that the 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 culture of whiskey that the average whiskey drinker has right now in Italy is is pretty high. If I compare it from to to just five or ten years ago when when we started. Yeah. So yes, uh, as you said, I think that cocktail bars will play uh, a really, really a huge part. In Good. This. Now I know it's getting uh, late over with you now. You're at, uh, just after eleven o'clock, so I'm going to um, ask Man, Graham. Boy, I like to talk about whiskey. So. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to put Graham Fraser's uh, next question to you, and I'm going to call that the last question for the night, and we can go and have a a, a dram. But um, he's asked. So, so you mentioned that um, the Italian whiskey market often doesn't get the limited releases in the sense that if, if a company releases a limited edition, Italy doesn't get it. Does it, Italy get any market exclusive special releases? I know we've bottled a cask for Beja Flor before, uh, but Ben uh, Marnix added on to that. There's loads of exclusive releases for Germany and France, but you don't see no, you don't notice many for Italy. Um, how, how do you feel about that? Said, that's that's how I feel. <laughs> but, but, but that is the case that there there is not a lot of Italian exclusive releases. No, it's true. There are some, of course, and uh, it's easier to find uh, uh, Italian exclusive releases uh, from uh, uh, smaller uh, distributors. I mean, from from distilleries that work with smaller distributors. Because uh, because it's just easier because usually smaller distributors know better how to uh, to, to communicate the the brand uh, and and everything. So it's it's uh, something um, similar to, to to what I said before. So it's uh, uh, you, you need to have uh, cherries to to to, yeah. to to make people buy I don't know apples even if 
apples are as good as cherries, I think, but, but still. Um, so, um, no, I'm, I'm, there are quite a few. And if you think of, uh, again, of five or 10 years ago, there are a lot, a lot more. But usually, uh, as I said, they are um, not exclusive for, for one market, but maybe are, uh, a single cask bottle for the distributor, as you as you sure. did a, a couple of times. So, um, I mean, one of our goals as as Whiskey Facile is uh, is trying to uh, make uh, people ask for exclusive releases or ex ex exclusive uh, bottlings, because of sorry. Hello, Marco. You're back. Te technology problems. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's become the the way of life right now. We were actually we were actually just getting close to wrapping up there, Marco, as well. But uh, good to have you back in for the end. But no, I, that, that's a good. I think everyone will um, be sympathetic to what you were saying there, Jacopo. We were just talking, Marco, about how. Um, there, there are not a lot of exclusive releases for Italy in the same way that there are for markets like Germany and France. On the other hand, you did used to get 37 year old Macallan for, for £4.50 a bottle. I think that is yeah. time. That's, <laughs> you've, you've, had, you've had plenty. <laughs> but that's, that's an interesting thing as well. You know, I've, I've been fortunate enough to drink in some of these incredible whiskey bars in places like Singapore. And you, you look at um, this one bar and things like that in Singapore and the old bottles on the back shelves and the vast majority of them were originally bottled. Italy. For, you know, so uh, how do you feel about a lot of these bottles that were bottled from Italy going into the world with these extortionate um, um, auction prices? Same answer as before. Sad. <laughs> exactly. We are, we, are, we are born in the, the, in the wrong decades. Yep, definitely. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember that uh, 10 years ago, you, but also five again years ago, you could just walk uh, into random and crappy looking restaurants and bars. And you, you could find, uh, I mean, uh, uh, dozens of uh, old yeah. vintage Macallans, all the Dimun import thing, uh, bottles, just just a regular single malts bottle in in, in the eighties uh, and, and some, sometimes even earlier. Uh, right now, it's it's not possible anymore because, of course, uh, as you all know, uh, auction prices got got just insane. So so everyone that had some 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 bottle just just sold them. And it's a pity because, uh, and, and, and I'm saying this not just from, um, from a, you know, a, a personal uh, perspective because, oh, shit, I, I really wanted to, to taste those whiskeys. Now I, I, I can do it. But also from, from a, a cultural point of view because uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's an heritage that we're, 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 we're missing right now. And w one example is, uh, uh, of, of course, it's, it's a different thing, but uh, I, I mentioned Valentino Zagatti's collection before, and he sold it to, uh, to, to some uh, uh, Dutch investors, which is yeah. perfectly fine, of course. And I'm happy for Valentino and for the, the Dutch who, who bought it because they, they bought some wonderful stuff but but still uh, uh, as an italian it's it's uh, it's a pity it's a for pity. me uh, they, they've done a wonderful museum in holland uh, for for this uh, for this collection yeah why 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 didn't we do it i mean it, it was we, we already had it it was easier and and valentino uh, said that okay if, if you want to, to to display my collection i will because i'm happy but we we, we didn't really think of uh, our whiskey heritage as a, as a, as a valuable thing from, from a cultural point of view, not, not just mm -hmm. from an economic point of view. And I think that nowadays many people are, are, are complaining and are, uh, are sad about having sold everything. Yeah, I, th I think that one very, very good thing to point out about the Valentino collection is that um, Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think part of that deal was that they were not allowed to break the collection apart. Yeah. Which, although it is, it's uh, a, a, a quite a bit away from where it once was held. Now that it's in the Netherlands, the fact that it is on display for people to see and 
it, it, although it's not in Italy, it is talked very much about as an Italian collection and a, a, the collection of one Italian man, which that's great to see. And I think that's good because in, in many ways, it's good in the sense that more and more people will start to understand when they go and see that collection, the role that Italy has played in the history of whiskey, um, which they maybe wouldn't have seen if it was in Italy because they would, it would have been less uh, international travellers going there perhaps. But um, gentlemen, thank you very, very much for your time tonight. It's been a, a privilege thank to you. have you. Uh, thank you. Hopefully the next time we chat will be in Italy over a dram at a festival. And I look forward to that being uh, sooner rather than later. Yep, You're welcome. Yes. Of course. And uh, as I said, as I said before, Scott, really thank you. Uh, we, yep. we were really, really honored to be part of the Soft Side sessions. And uh, thank you very much. It's been it's an honor to have you on, guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you to all the guys who, who, who spend their Friday night listening, uh, <laughs> listening to, to our things. It's uh, still incredible for us. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Cheers.